Hello, well today we're going to talk about the LM386, the low voltage, low voltage audio power amplifier. Not a lot of power, but still power. Uh, this thing is so easy to, to use in a circuit for uh, amplifying. It's so damn easy. And it's used a lot for uh, like portable guitar amplifiers. So if you have a guitar and you want like a portable amplifier, meaning that you just want it to be powered by little battery, then that's the perfect uh, op amp or IC to use. Uh, there's a lot of circuits, guitar amplifier circuits that use the LM386. In particular, there's one that's called Smoky, the Smoky amp that fits into a, it's not a matchbox, but a, like a like a cigarette pack something like that and there are variations on the smoky design i think one is called ruby and another, there's another one uh, and the, the main modification is the the preamp using a jfet so uh, that modification the, that preamp modification you don't really need it but i think it can help because of the impedance issue or mismatch between the, the guitar which is very high and uh, the input impedance of the amplifier which is high but not that high it's about 50k 50k ohms i think for the lm386 okay so let's uh, look at the data sheet because that's all you need to look at everything is in there so you just google lm386 data sheet the PDF and you're gonna find this one from Texas Instruments. The one, the LM386 chip that you have is probably gonna be not from TI, probably you got it from Amazon or eBay, it's probably gonna be a fake anyway, but it's good enough. Okay, so this, this explains what's inside. As you can see, that there's a quite a bit of stuff. A few transistors, a few transistors, diodes, passive elements, etc. So there's quite a few things in there. And if you go through that thing, I mean, it looks pretty tedious, but it's actually very informative. First, you have the pin layout. So it's a good idea to look at that. Uh, a few words about the gain pins, 1, 8. So by default, if you don't put anything on the gain pins, the, the gain is going to be 20. The voltage gain is going to be 20. If you start bypassing it, you can uh, up the the gain to 200 and probably even more. So if you do that, then you're going to get distortion, which is a uh, which which can be a good thing if you do uh, if you do a guitar amplifier, which can be a bad thing if you just do an amplifier to when the input is like a, uh, the line input of some radio or the uh, the headphone output from some, I don't know, Walkman or whatever. So 1 8 are the gain, gain setting pins. You have your uh, in, uh, inverting input, non-inverting input. So that's where you put your uh, signal here. Ground, the output, this is the voltage source. So it's, it's a single supply, single power supply. The bypass pin, so that bypass pin Sometimes uh, you don't really you don't need to use it, but it can help if your uh, power supply has noise. So I think it doesn't hurt. You can just you can just put like a capacitor in there, like a 10, 10 microfarad capacitor in there, and just ground that. I think that that doesn't hurt. But in the circuit that they use, they don't use it. They don't put it. They don't put a cap there. I think they suggested though. Okay, so let's go. Let's keep going. Supply voltage. So the max is what fifteen. I'm using nine volt because it's uh, it, it's uh, probably the the best power supply you can give to that thing if you want it portable. Okay, the input voltage. Your 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 source. The the source is uh, it has to be between uh, 400 millivolts and minus 400 
millivolts. Otherwise, for sure, it's going to clip. Uh, other things of interest. Okay, speaker impedance has to be at least four. I'm going to use. Uh, I would probably use an eight. I mean, if I if if I wanted to build like a, a portable guitar amplifier, I would use a nine volt battery, and I would lose like a one watt, a little one watt speaker. That'd be perfect. And that would fit in a very small box. Okay, output power, that could be in of interest. So it's going to depend on your uh, power supply and the load, of course. But let's look at this one. Uh, no, this one. No, N3, N3 is, has more power. Let's look at the N1. So 6 volt, 8 ohms. You get a typical power, uh, power output of 325 mega, uh, milliwatts, not megawatts, milliwatts. So it's good enough for, uh, you know, small applications. Okay, voltage gain. So we saw that it was, uh, default is 20. If you don't use the gain pins, it can go up to 300. No. If you put 10 microfarad, it goes to 46. Okay. I thought it would be higher than that, but okay, let's go on. I thought if you do that, you would get up to 200, but let's, let's keep on going. Okay. So those, we don't really care that much. Yeah. So th there is an internal 1.35 K ohm resistor that sets the gain of this device to 20. So if you don't do anything about the gain pins, you're going to get a gain of 20. Okay. So let's, let's look at the circuit for gain equal 20. So let's look at, I mean, this is very simple. So this is your voltage source, your signal, and you have a pot here so that you can control the uh, amplitude. Since you cannot go higher than 4, 400 millivolts as, as the amplitude, you may want to, you know, to have a pot there. That's the reason for the pot, to control that uh, amplitude. Uh, four, I think is the, that's the ground pin. So it has to be grounded. Two is the, uh, this one is the uh, inverting input. Since we are using the other one, we ground that one. What is six? Six is the voltage source. So one eight are the uh, gain pins. So here they are open. Seven is the bypass capacitor. So here I, it, you could have put a capacitor here, 10, 10 microfarad capacitor and then grounded that here so that's the bypass pin okay so here we are getting closer to the output output is um, five pin five you get a capacitor of course and it's a big one and this is the output here and this is your load So the load is a speaker, uh, like an 8 ohm speaker. And why, you may wonder, what the hell is this thing? This branch here. Okay, so this is called like, this is a Zobel, Zobel, Z-O-B-E-L, Zobel, Zobel network here. This is to um, counteract the effect of the... Um, the coil, the voice coil in the speaker. So you have 8 ohm in the speaker, they put 10 ohm here, and then you have the coil. And to counteract the coil, they put the capacitor here. So it's stable, it's, it's, it makes the amplifier more stable. That's all. Okay. So this is uh, LM386 with gain of 20. Excellent. So let's look at other things you can do. If you want to play with the gain, so here it's explained. It's a bit tedious, the explanation. So let's just look at the... Let's just look at the picture. Because a picture is worth a thousand words, as they say. So gain equal 200. 
So as you can see, it's the same it's the same circuit as with gain equal 20. The only difference is here. Pins 1 and 8. It's, it, it, it has now a 10 microfarad capacitor. So with this, you, gain, you have a gain of 200. Of course, it's going to create clipping. I mean, if, the, if, the, if you use that as a guitar amplifier, I mean, the, uh, the guitar can, uh, depending on uh, the attack, can generate uh, more than 400 millivolts already. So if you don't att attenuate, it's going to clip like crazy. So you're going to get a lot of distortion, which can be a good thing. Okay, so here again of 200, the rest is the same. And here it shows the bypass. So for some reason here, the, it's showing the bypass capacitor, but on the other one, it wasn't showing that. Weird. Okay, let's move on. I think there's also, you can uh, control the bass. Okay, gain equal 50. So if you want, like, if you want, if you want to control the gain, you can put like a variable resistor here. Here it's, put, it's putting 1.2K and the 10 microfarad capacitor for a gain of 50. So if you, so if you have a variable resistor here, you can have your gain vary from, I don't know, from 20 to 200 potentially. So that that's a pot a pot that you may, you may want to put a pot here. Let's put it this way for the gain control. Otherwise, the same circuit. And I think at some point they talk about that, the bass boost. Yeah. LM386 with bass boost. Of course, if you use a very small speaker, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. But where is the bass boost? Oh, it's here. So it's just an RC, pins one and five. Interesting. Okay, so if you want to put some, you can put another pot here. I mean, you can control the bass boost here. If you put a pot here. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it about that. Okay, so let's let's build that thing in uh, in LT Spice. But before you do that, you need to get the LM386 model, the LT Spice model from somewhere. You can get it from the internet if you search, or you can get it directly from me. I'll put a link in the in the description. Then you can just download directly. But you still have you still have to install it in LT Spice. So I'm going to show you that next. Okay, so to add the LM386 model to LT Spice, you need to do the following. So assume that you have downloaded that model, that file. So lm386ee.sub. What you need to do is to copy, copy this thing to, to. It's gonna. I think it's gonna depend on how you install. It's either on the documents or it's gonna be. In my case, it's gonna be on the users. Uh, up, up data local but it could be under your documents I think it depends if you install LT spice for one for yourself or all users so in my case it's here so uh, you went to lib and you have to put it on the sub in this one so just paste that thing Okay, so it's here, among other models. Okay, so I think you're done here. So now, let's fire up LT Spice. So go into File. Uh, open. Let's go here, where you put it in. So in there. Oh shit, I should have put it. No, it's not here. Oh, oh, I know. I haven't done this in a long time, so it's not schematics, it's all files. And then you find your LM386 that you just put in. This one. Okay, so open that. 
Okay, so you have to be, this is going to be the name of the model, so LM386EE, so you have to be on E and you right click, and then you can create the symbol. Yes. Okay, so now it's done, and then now you save, you save. Okay, so now let's say, if I get out of here, so do new schematic, is it going to be in there? I think it's under, okay, it's under auto-generated, it's not going to be here. Yeah, it's not going to be in there, it's going to be here, auto-generated, yes. There you go. Here it is. So now you can build your circuit around it. Okay, so now I did I did make uh, I did make the circuit in LT Spice. So this is my LM386, the EE. And basically this is your voltage source, so it's a sine wave. Amplitude is 100 millivolt, uh, frequency 1k. So it goes to the non-inverting, the, the non-inverting. Oh, I just realized that I switched. This is the negative and this is positive. Ah, it doesn't matter. I mean, V in should go on to the, this one, the non-inverting, and this one should go to the inverting. But it doesn't really matter. What does that do? So I go ground, voltage source, 9 volts. So G1, G8, those are the gain pins. I didn't put anything because I'm expecting a gain, I'm expecting a gain of 20. Uh, yeah, so you have the output capacitor and you have the load. Hey, uh, the load <laughs> should be a speaker, but uh, uh, simulating a speaker is not easy. So I'm just putting corners here and I'm just saying that the speaker is basically a, a resistor with an 8 ohm value. It's a very crude approximation but it simplifies things quite a bit. I don't think it matters that much. So let's run that thing and let's see. So let's look at the input. That's the input, so it varies from minus 100 millivolts to 100 millivolts, so it's well below the threshold that the LM386 can handle, so there should be no clipping. And let's look at the Vout. And, of course, okay, so you have your amplification, so now the output is between minus 2 volt and plus 2 volt, but it's uh, inverting. Okay, so I changed the <coughs> I changed the, the circuit. So now the signal goes to what they call ENP, INP, the non-inverting input, and the ground is connected to the inverting input, which they call the negative input, I guess. So let's run that thing. Alright, so let's put the input, output, let's zoom a little bit. Okay, so now you can see the input is here, output here, and now it's in phase, it, it, it is non-inverting. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here. If you like this kind of content, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will make more. See ya.